This is the Sitam Worship Service. Welcome to the Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us on this, the very last Sunday of 2020. And we're grateful that you've made the CBS Family Service part of your day today. And I know you're going to be blessed uh, not only by the worship, but also by the word uh, that is going to be delivered today by the Deputy Bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries, Dr. Karitam Bagara. Bishop, 2020 has been such a roller coaster year, such a difficult year for, I would think, anyone who's watching us and joining us for the service today. It's been a year of uncertainty, anxiety, uh, and, and, and I'm sure people are even more anxious about the next year, 2021. How, how do you think it, it, it's going to be possible to move from 2020 without the baggage of the fear and anxiety into a new year like 2021? Thank you very much, uh, Kwame. Yes, it's been a difficult year. Some people have said that the year was short. Yes. <laughs> it was January, February, Corona, <laughs> Jerusalem, yes. BBI, yes. and now we're in December. In December. <laughs> uh, but I think for the Christian, Amen. the word of God always provides comfort mm. and also hope. Mm. It gives us the assurance that no matter what happens, God will never leave us. Amen. And as I will be sharing, mm -hmm. God has told us to forget about the past. Amen. He is always Amen. doing a new thing. Yes, yes. So I am looking to next year yes. with anticipation that God is going to do something new. Wonderful. He's a God of resurrection. Wonderful. He can raise what is dead. Yes. Yes. And uh, our hopes, our dreams that may have gone down, Amen. they can rise again. Praise God. So I would encourage our listeners Amen. to listen to the sermon. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You'll be preaching to us from the subject uh, when the going gets tough. Uh, as we get into the service itself. Uh, and, and our hashtag is hashtag press on. Uh, and I, I'm really excited about the fact that you, you pointed out that our confidence should not necessarily be in the events that will take place in the next year, but rather in God. Yes. And when it is God, yes. then we know that God is unchanging. Amen. He says, I do not change. Amen. And therefore you are not destroyed. Amen. If we were to look to circumstances, uh, there are many things that yes. could destroy us. But yes. because God is constant, Amen. he's consistent, Amen. he's reliable, mm. he's able, yes. uh, there is excitement in the air. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And I trust that you feel it. We certainly are excited to bring to you uh, this service today. And our uh, worship leader and moderator is the Reverend Patrick Kuchio. Over to the worship team. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on Sitam Broadcast Service for this family service on the last Sunday of the year 2020. Yes, 2020 has finally come to an end. And as always, we look forward to a special time in worship and in the Word of God. My name is Patrick Kuchu. I'm serving as your moderator today. Welcome those of you who are listening to us on Hope FM, those of you who are watching us on Hope TV, those of you who are watching us on Sitam Church online channels, every Sunday at this time. Today, our hashtag is press on. Our hashtag today is press on. As always, let's get started with our praise and worship session with this amazing worship team. Please put your hands together and help me welcome this amazing CBS worship team. Come on, somebody just clap your hands to the Lord in the house today. For you today, and there's just one thing that I want to say. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, for all you've done in my life, for all the blessings that I cannot say. With a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, oh, with a song of praise, with an outstretched heart, I'll bless your name. I'll bless your name. Say thank you, thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
and gave me your light. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Well, you took my sin. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. All I want to say.
Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Somebody just clap your hands in the house today. Give it a bounce for Jesus. Has he been good to you? We can give him a shout.
our hearts. He gives us life. And so he has done for the holy hour of 2020. And we are going to say that great is our God. Oh, great is our God. Greatly to be praised. Give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath. go ahead and just worship the Lord just go ahead let him hear your voice worship him just worship him 
He alone deserves all our praise. The reason why you and I are alive today and we have breath in our lungs is that we may praise Him. The Bible declares, let every creature that has breath in it praise the Lord. So just go ahead and worship the Lord. This has been a tough year, but that you have made it to the very end is reason enough for us to praise Him, to worship Him. He alone deserves all our praise. Father, we worship You. We adore You. We thank You. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, Your name is to be praised. We worship You. Besides You, there is none other. Whom have we or not besides Thee? Whom have we in heaven but Thee? King of kings and Lord of lords, You reign and You rule in, over the affairs of men and of nations. Thank You that You hold all things together. Thank you that in you all things consist, O oh God. Thank you that your Spirit has not abandoned us, but the Holy Spirit has stayed the hand of destruction. Thank you that when the enemy rose up like a flood, your Spirit raised up a standard against him. We thank you. We worship you. We were sick, but you healed us. We were broke, but you provided for us. We were confused, but you provided wisdom for us and you guided us. Father, receive all the praise, receive all the glory, receive all the honor. We worship you, we worship you. You know, it's not possible to close this year without reading the words of Psalm 124. Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger flared against us, the flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept us over. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful as individuals. We are grateful as families. We are grateful as your church. We are grateful as a nation, as your creation across this globe. We are eternally grateful. Thank you, Father, for carrying us through this difficult year. Indeed, you have carried us as if on eagle's wings. Thank you that beneath, underneath are the everlasting arms of God that have carried us through this perilous year. Our hearts are full of gratitude. To you be all the praise, all the glory and all the honor. And as we stand at the threshold of a new year, we abandon our hearts to you. We ask and pray that you may grant us the grace to press on and to press on regardless of what we may be up against that we will finish this year strong in your loving arms. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's His breath in our lungs. And that is why we pour out our praise to Him alone because the Bible tells us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. What an amazing time of worship. Many thanks to this anointed CBS worship team. The Lord has used you tremendously right from the beginning in March 
when we began having our online services, we want to thank you so, so, so very much. The Lord bless you. Richly, please go ahead and give them some digital hand claps and just give them, give it up to our CBS worship team. God bless you. Richly, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Once again, we want to say, welcome and feel right at home in God's presence. Uh, feel free to proceed and be seated if you are standing. We especially want to welcome those of our friends who are joining us uh, on this seat and broker service uh, from Namibia, uh, from America, uh, from Romania, in East Timor, all over the world, and indeed right here in Kenya. We thank uh, all our seat and assemblies uh, right from the southern region, the northern region, the western region, from wherever you are following this broadcast service from. Thank you very, very much. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell for notification and reminder so that every time we have something coming up, you will be notified accordingly. Please don't be mean. Go ahead and share this service, uh, this worship experience with others uh, or in your sphere of influence, your neighbors. Why don't you start a watch party on Facebook this morning? Go ahead and invite friends uh, who are near or far. And let's be blessed together. Share this link uh, for this service and please use the hashtag press on, press on and tweet as many uh, takeaways as possible from today's uh, worship service. We are delighted to welcome our speaker for today. Actually, for the second time on CBS, this is our Deputy Bishop, Karita Bagara and he's a Deputy Bishop at Sitam. He'll be speaking to us on the subject when the going gets tough where they're going, get stuff. Once again, our hashtag for the day is press on, press on. Please engage with us by posting on Twitter, on Instagram using today's hashtag and we'll be happy to engage as we share this service online. Now, as we continue, here's some important notices about our ministry. Please watch this clip. Thank you for joining us today on the CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we worship and hear from God. For our young people, we also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitam YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 1.30 p.m. Our CBS Sunday School happens every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for ages 10 to 12 years, at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below, and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on the Sitam Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our Safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully online. We expect Safari group meetings to be virtual using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom until further notice. If you are not in a Safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines. Please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who may be bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. 
All our Sitam Church offices are now open between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Monday to Friday and also observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam broadcast service and many thanks for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies are open for in-person worship services. However, if you wish to attend, you will have to register in advance to book a seat. You can do so by using the USSD code star 304 star 933 hash for Safaricom users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirm for the service you chose to attend. If you are not on Safaricom, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. And it's now time to worship the Lord with our substance. There will be a clip following shortly just to give you further instructions on how to give. But let's pause for our prayer. Our Father, we are so grateful that you provided for us in a sun-scorched land. You have remained the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've provided for us in miraculous, unexpected ways. And our hearts are full of gratitude. And as we come to worship you this morning with our substance, would you bless every gift and every giver? And may these gifts be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. This we ask with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, go right ahead. Watch this clip. Thereafter, please. Give and give cheerfully. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for the continued support of God's work through Setem. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the following platforms. M-Pesa or Airtel Money, the pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For account name, please indicate the Sitem Assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service, but you are not a member of any Sitem Assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other Sitem pay bill numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfer or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Bank, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch, Account number 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. Swift code. K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate your giving and continued prayers for the ministry. God bless you. And it's now time to share in the Word of God with our preacher for the day, who is our Deputy Bishop at Christ is Yensa Ministries, Dr. Karita Mbagara. The title of the sermon today is When the Going Gets Tough. When the Going Gets Tough. I am fully confident you will be wonderfully blessed by this message. Once again, today's hashtag is press on, press on. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the last Sunday of the year 2020, and this has been a very difficult year for many people. That's why we must remind ourselves that when the going gets tough, it's the tough that gets going. This is well illustrated by the story of allegedly British leader who lived in the late 5th century and early 6th century. The name is King Arthur, who according to the medieval uh, histories and romances, led the defense of Britain against Saxon invaders. There is an early story about this king that should be of interest to us this morning. According to that story, 
there was a time when King Arthur was hiding in a cave from marauding uh, enemies that had come against his people. While he was there, he observed a spider that kept on trying to spin a web, but repeatedly kept on failing. And uh, when he observed it, at the final end, uh, the spider succeeded in making the web. King Arthur learned one of the most transformative lessons in his life. If he would succeed, he realized that he needed to keep on trying and never ever give up. With that lesson, King Arthur left the cave to go and lead his people to great exploits against his enemies. You see, owing to the prowling coronavirus, many people, certainly not all, failed to achieve what they set out to do this year. And like King Arthur, they have retreated to a dark place and, uh, and they are almost giving up because things have not gone as they should have gone. But we must remind ourselves we will be like the, spy, like the spider. We will not give up. We will pull up our socks and get out of our hiding places and get going. I want to share with you five attributes that I find in the life of Paul that will keep us going even when the going is tough. Turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15, and this is the NIV rendering of the passage. It says, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live to what we have obtained uh, this far. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as uh, you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. The first thing that I notice about Paul is that he lived a life of dissatisfaction. Some people have called this sanctified dissatisfaction. There is even a book that is called Holy Discontentment, talking about the same uh, attribute of dissatisfaction, a godly dissatisfaction. And this is the first essential for progress in life, whether it's the Christian life or just the life that we live. You see, Paul had this attitude. He had worked much harder than any other person. He had been imprisoned frequently. He says that he was flogged more severely, and this is to be found in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. From verse 24, he says, Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers and in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have harbored, sorry, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. And you expect that when he says all these things, he will end up and say, and because of this, I have given up. But that's not Paul. He says, besides everything else, I faced daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? 
and I do not feel weak. In other words, I am a person that presses on, that moves on to do what God has called me to do. I am not content with what I have achieved. I keep on going. You know, even at this time, Paul had achieved a lot, but he decides I must press on. Why? Because like he tells us in, uh, in, uh, in the passage that we read in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, that I must push forward towards what God has called me. He decided that as long as he was alive, he had not arrived. He decided he was not going to be a settler. He was always aiming to be a pioneer. And that is the kind of attitude that we need to have. Because if we do not, you know, have that attitude, there are times we'll be as good as Paul, and chances are that we will sit on our royals. We need to have that spirit that there is still much more territory that remains to be taken. My brothers and sisters, dissatisfaction with the status quo overcomes the temptation to, uh, to compare ourselves with others, especially those who are underperforming. And that is, you know, a very likely thing for many of us. We like, you know, uh, comparing ourselves with people that have underachieved and then we sit back and say we have arrived. That was not Paul. And we want to emulate this that Paul was doing, always pushing on, always going forward. You know, we should not deceive ourselves by either thinking too highly of ourselves that we have arrived or think too low of ourselves. We have God on our side and consequently we should be ambitious because there is such a thing as godly ambition. And God wants us to keep on going forward. Even in a year like this one, when we have been visited by coronavirus, we will acknowledge, yes, the virus is there, but, and the ravages of the, of the virus are there, but that has not changed the, the fact that we will keep on going. Amen. The second thing that I find from this passage is that of focus on the issue at hand. We could call it devotion. Paul says, forgetting what lies behind, one thing I do. This ability to concentrate is the secret to progress. One thing must be the one that we focus on. And the idea of one thing is abundant in the scriptures. Here Paul says, one thing I do. In the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 21, Jesus told one person, one thing you lack. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 42, the Bible says, one thing is needful. Jesus speaking to, to Martha, one thing is necessary. One thing you need to look at. In the book of John chapter 9 verse 25, there is a, a one thing, one thing I know. This is a blind man speaking and saying, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I can see courtesy of meeting Jesus. And if you think it is only a New Testament thing, in the book of Psalms 27 verse 4, it is the writer of the Psalm who is uh, thought to be David. He said, one thing I seek to be in the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, we need to identify what is it that is at hand and focus on it. Because by focusing on the thing that God has given us to do, we will be a success. The story is told of D.L. Moody, who had a turning point in his life. It was said that before the tragedy of the Chicago fire that happened in 1871, Moody was involved in many things. Sunday school promotion, YMCA work, evangelistic meetings, and many other activities. But after the fire, he determined to devote himself exclusively to evangelism. He found the one thing that he needed to do. And because of that becoming a reality in his life, there were millions of people that heard the gospel from this man, and many came to faith. One thing that we need to identify that we will pursue with all our energies. It is said, and it is also true out of observation, that there are very few athletes 
who are multi talented you will find either one is a a, a a splinter or runs the the middle distances or a marathoner but rarely do you find a splinter who is also doing marathon most winners specialize and concentrate on just a few disciplines my brothers and sisters we have something that god has given us to do and we want to do it and do it well for his glory and for his honor and that's why we must identify the work we are doing and we will not be removed from it it reminds me of nehemiah when he is building the wall there were many other people that were calling him to meetings so that they could distract him but in nehemiah chapter 3 um, chapter 6 verse 3 he says i am doing a great work so that i cannot come down I cannot come down to just have a time of leisure sitting down with people. I have something to do. Have you identified the one thing for which you will be remembered? You are working at it. You know, concentration is the secret to power as we have said. Consider that when a lens is taken, yeah, uh, Uh, and you you point it to the light or the sunlight for example and it focuses the light in an object it can cause a fire brothers and sisters it is just us being invited to focus all our energies towards what is our value and what is our priority because we must live by priorities we must live by values that's what will make us successful and we will not allow anything corona included to distract us from what god wants to achieve for us but i also notice that paul says i forget the past and that is important he forgot the good he also forgot the bad and that's a prerequisite to doing well in the future it is a matter of choice not to be shackled and controlled by the past by the things that happened we will not allow ourselves to be held hostage by the things that have happened in our past you see some people when they think of their past and the failures they have had and the regrets they have about the past they are living uh like one pastor in our church used to say they live a life of cursing a life of you know rehearsing the things that happened but also if you think about the past and um, the things that were good then you may be just nursing the things that were happening in the past and you are always talking about the good old days but somebody has also put it very well that the good old days are made up of a uh, a combination of uh, a good imagination but a bad memory you forget the bad things that happened and you have an imagination that everything was good that is not right we must identify the thing that god has called us to do forget what has happened both good and bad and work at it and work at it according to the gifting that god has given us because like john white said freedom is in the design if you find how you were designed by god then give yourself according to your design you are going to succeed you see a fish was designed to be in water and that's why it swims very well and uh, it cannot try to do anything on land because it was not designed for that you too were designed for something find that thing that you were designed for forget about the things that you have achieved focus on that because it will be your purpose in life let us live in the present a victorian essayist by the name of real belloc said uh, while you are dreaming of the future or regretting the past the present which is all that you have sleeps from you and is gone we will not allow that to happen we will devote ourselves to what we have decided we want to do but also it is not just dissatisfaction with the present and devotion we need to work hard let me call this determination Paul says I press on I strain toward what is ahead there is intense endeavor for him to do what he is invited to do and not he says I do I strain I press on so there is a part for you to do avoid the danger the double danger 
of becoming a quietist. A quietist believes that God must do it all. So they always sit back passively waiting for God to do things. No, there is a part for us to do. The other danger is to become an activist where you think I am called to do everything. So you say, I must do it all. No, we will not do like that. We will ha work hard in partnership with God. This is called working smart. This is not a call to apathy where we say we trust God uh, and uh, we just do nothing. No, it is co-working with God. More importantly than anything else, it is to allow God to be at the center. Because when God is not at the center, as uh, and I am not putting Chinua Achembe, then things will fall apart. He is the one without whom everything else does not work. And I want to believe that we are going to co-work with God in the coming year because there is much more that we need to achieve. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. Without me, you can't do anything. Not that you can't do anything. Actually, you can do a lot without Jesus, but it will count for nothing. And because we want whatever we do to account when God comes to call us to account, then we want to work with him. We partner with him and work hard. And that will remove anxiety when we are working with God because we know our energies will be, will be blessed of him. But also because we live in this world, we need to partner with the people that are around us. Yes, God has put us as a community so that we work with others. When we work alone, we will do uh, very little. But if we ensure that we are working with, with others, then we will, there will be a multiplication of, what, of, our, of our output. Somebody has said that it is better to work with 10 people than to do the work of 10 people. And I believe in that. So we will do that. Work hard and work with others because they will help us to achieve more. The fourth thing that I, I noticed from the passage that we read about Paul is that he has a direction. He has a direction because direction sets us apart. Direction, somebody has said, is more critical than speed. Let's consider this. If you are riding on a motorbike or being carried on a motorbike, how comfortable would you be if the person that is riding the motorbike has his eyes behind him, you know, always looking back or constantly looking back, you will not be comfortable because you are likely to get into, into a danger. A plowman, Jesus said, that puts his hand to the plow and keeps on looking back cannot be accepted and cannot even do what he is supposed to do. He will be derailed. It is important for us to have a direction a direction that we are moving towards. How do we get direction? Direction is born out of what we have come to call vision or foresight. Paul knew what awaited him and that influenced his gaze. He kept his eyes on what he was looking for. And we also see in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, we are told that Jesus foreseeing what he was to get from God. He kept his eyes focused on the cross because he had a foresight. And my brothers and sisters, when we lack in foresight, we will lose direction. We will be taken in all kinds of, you know, directions. We may end up just chasing after rabbit trails. But when we know what we want to achieve in the future, then we will have a good direction. And may I at this point say that ultimately we are headed towards eternity. Are you aligned towards that direction? Are you living for just the now and here? Or are you living also for what lies ahead of you? Allow your time to flow from the future to the present and let the past be gone. And by that, I mean, allow what lies ahead of you to influence what you're doing today so that you're moving to the, you know, to the future in, in the present. The present is informed by the future. I know when we went to school, we were taught, we were taught to think past, present, future. I want to reverse that. It is future, present, and the past. 
and the past may not matter too much when we are talking about these things. Brothers and sisters, we need to work hard. We need to be a people with the same direction. We are saying we need to be dissatisfied. We have said that we want to be people that are devoted to something. In the final analysis, I want to say that we need to be a disciplined people. A people that are living according to what we already know to be right and to be true. Paul puts it this way, live up to what you have attained or obtained. Keep true to the rules of the game. It is important for us to be men and women of integrity. And that word integrity that is thrown everywhere actually comes from integer. Integer means whole numbers. It is not fractions. It's not even part whole and part uh, and whole. No, it is talking about wholeness. It's talking about us being consistent, walking according to the truths that we have known. That will help us to win. The story is told of, a, of an athlete by the name of Jim Thorpe. He was the star of the 1912 Olympics for winning the pentathlon and the decathlon only to have the medals withdrawn when it was discovered that he had played semi-professional baseball. In those days, if you had participated in such, you were not allowed to participate in the Olympics. And uh, although much later, the Olympic Committee, in actually in 1985, they, they, they reinstated uh, his medals, because of that, uh, the fact that he had been a semi-professional baseball player, the medals had been withdrawn. He had not lived up to the rules of, of the game to that point. Are you living up to those game, I mean, to the rules of the game that God has set for us? Because if you don't, you will find that you're a loser at the end. Indisciplined people are many. They are the good starters, but very poor finishers. And the Bible is full of them. You can think of people like Lot. He started well, following with Abraham, going the same direction. But at certain point, he couldn't be disciplined enough to keep, you know, the good relationship. And because of that, you know where he ended, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lost everything, including a wife, only uh, managed to escape with uh, two daughters. You could talk about Samson, blessed of God, a man whose strength is phenomenal. He could do all sorts of things. The spirit of God would come upon him and he would defeat a whole army. One man defeating a whole army. At one time, he used just a jawbone of a donkey. We could talk of King Saul. We could talk of many other people that started well, but they lacked the discipline of doing things the right way, the way God had revealed to them. But also in the New Testament, we have a man, Ananias and Sapphira. These two, a couple, had seen great miracles happening, but they allowed themselves to be tempted and they lost their credibility. And uh, the result was that, they, you know, they died in one day and they were buried and forgotten and their story is remembered for bad uh, bad reasons. We don't want to be like that. We want to be disciplined people, men and women that are given to doing what is right. We will not allow corruption to come into what we are doing for God. I want to say that it is important in this that we also benchmark with others. In the book of, uh, of Philippians 3.17 where we were reading, we were told to keep our eyes on those who live as we do, where Paul was saying, we have lived right, we have walked as models, and watch for those men. And it is good that Paul said, look for those who live like we, we do, because Paul is not here. But today we have people that are living right, and we can look to them. We can benchmark with them. No man is self-sufficient. We need to walk with like-minded people, especially uh, with greater experience, those who have greater experience, they will teach us, uh, they will help us to have right values. We don't need to reinvent the wheel as it were. Let us learn even from the mistakes of others and the experiences of others. But we also need to be patient with ourselves because God has given us the opportunity to walk with these people 
and to learn, let us then also be patient as we grow because growth is incremental. Progress is incremental. Brothers and sisters, I want to wish you a blessed 2021, but we will be able to make it a blessed year ourselves by making sure that we are dissatisfied with the status quo. What happened in the year 2020 will not hold us back. We will not be held hostage by that. We will also be devoted. We will look for something that we are living for. We are going to be a determined people working hard. We are going to go in a particular direction that is informed by what we know lies ahead of us. And we are going to be a disciplined people that are working with others to learn from them. And as we do that, it is inevitable that we will be greatly, greatly blessed. These principles work in all seasons of life. So whether you're a young person or you're an old person, this is true. May the Lord bless you as you contemplate what God has allowed us to share this day. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, I want to pray that you will take this word and allow it to inform the way we live, each one of us. You have told us that no word of yours will return to you void. And I want to believe that this one will also not return to you empty. It will achieve that for which you have caused me to share it. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Wow, wow, what a man, what a word. Bishop, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for such a profound word. When the going gets tough. I wonder what your takeaway from today's sermon was. I have my takeaway. Please go ahead and tweet your takeaway using the hashtag press on, press on. When the going gets tough, press on. When you're up against insurmountable challenges, press on. When you feel like giving up, press on. That's it. Press on, press on, press on. Um, well, what a blessing it, is, it has been just to be part of this worship service and to hear from God today. Please, once again, we remind you to share this link uh, with somebody online who may have missed it. Send them the link from our online channels on YouTube and on Facebook, and I'm sure someone will be tremendously blessed on account of your generosity. Thank you very much, Bishop. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again during the week on Tuesday as you join us for the After Sunday Live on Hope FM, Hope TV, and on Sitem Church online platforms on Facebook and YouTube channels. This is on Tuesday at 5 p.m. We will have a live discussion where any questions you have about today's sermon will be addressed by the Deputy Bishop, Karita Bagara. So keep tweeting. Keep posting and please share your feedback using today's hashtag press on. Use your takeaways and just share on our various social media platforms. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your savior today, please let us know by contacting us on the following WhatsApp number 0728-221-221. I repeat, 0728-221-221 and we'll be glad to engage with you. Well, we'll be sure to follow up with you in the course of this week, those of us who have engaged, but for now we want to pronounce the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he keep you from all harm, from all danger, from all disease and from all affliction. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the light of God dispel all darkness, all discouragements, and every sense of defeat. May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you his peace throughout the remaining part of this year and into the new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you richly and have a great week in God's presence. And see you on the 31st for our all-night Kesha. On the 31st, we'll have an all-night Kesha from 10 in the evening 
till 6 a.m. and it's all going to be online right here on CBS. God bless you. Thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. And now we want to thank our safari groups that have continued meeting consistently through various digital platforms, many for the very first time. Special thanks to those safari groups across the country that have reached out on their own initiative to support those in need around them. Jesus said, whatever you have done to the list of this, you have done to me. May God continue to bless you and your family and may he shower you with the richest blessings to the glory and honor of his holy name. Amen.